Well, new at six tonight, a fight over better wages is pitting farmers against farm workers. Workers want more overtime pay. Farmers say they can't afford it. We had doctors testify about the stress injuries that they see every day because farm workers, you know, working their bodies um, for 60 hours a week. It's getting to the point where we're going to be squeezed so hard with all the added expenses that keep going higher. And some of us are getting limited on production. The overtime battle is reaching a breaking point as Democrats and Republicans are choosing sides. I sat down exclusively with the head of a federal agency who finds himself right in the middle of this fight over New York farms. There are senators who want to make this a political uh, issue. U.S. Secretary Thomas Vilsack is the head of the Department of Agriculture, a federal agency that's found itself trying to fix serious supply chain issues as the cost of food is punching a hole in Americans' pocketbooks. One problem contributing to the high costs right now, a farm worker shortage that in New York State has farmhands battling for more overtime pay. And in New York, Republicans and Democrats are split on the issue. They want to basically uh, create political theater around it. Uh, and that's unfortunate because there are farms in this state, in fact, there are farms probably in every state of the country that need farm workers. The farm fight came to a head this year with a big win for farm workers when a state board voted to lower the threshold at which they can make overtime pay from 60 hours a week to 40. The move is supported by New York's Democratic Governor Kathy Hochul, who believes it will solve the worker shortage. If someone is now going to be paid for their overtime hours, they'll still get the overtime hours. Why would they not want to come to New York State to work and receive a much higher compensation than they would in these other states? Hochul said today the extra cost to farmers will be absorbed by a state tax credit. But some farmers argue the move will put them out of business. And Republican Congresswoman Elise Stefanik is on their side, telling CBS 6 today, from the beginning, I have vocally opposed Hochul's Farm Laborers Wage Board's devastating decision to lower the overtime threshold. She's supporting a federal bill that would keep the overtime threshold at 60 hours a week. During my exclusive interview with Secretary Vill this week, I asked what he thinks. Do you believe that farm workers should have a 40-hour week? Well, here's what I think. I think that the reason why we're having this conversation is because we don't have enough farm workers. If we had more farm workers, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Why don't we have more farm workers? Well, because the Senate, the United States Senate, refuses to pass the Farm Worker Modernization Act, which would increase significantly the number of farm workers. Vilsack, a Democrat, blames Senate Republicans for failing to pass the legislation he says would have done this. It legitimately identifies individuals living in other countries who can come to the United States with permission, with training and with experience to be able to do the farm work. But time is running out. New York's Department of Labor Commissioner Roberta Reardon has about a month to decide whether to approve the new overtime threshold. The uh, Department of Labor Commissioner has to make the decision whether to lower that threshold. Do you think the right answer is to lower the threshold right I think now? the right answer would be if I were the commissioner, uh, the labor commissioner, I'd be on the phone encouraging Republican members of the House in the state of New York to encourage their colleagues their Republican senators in other states to do the right thing and to pass the Farm Worker Modernization Act. Secretary Vilsack wouldn't answer adamant the solution is to increase the labor force through federal legislation. It doesn't put you in a situation where you have to pick between which side you like, farmers or laborers. Now, we did hear from one Democrat who is taking a middle ground approach to the issue, Matt Costelli, who's facing off with Representative Stefanik in the race for the 21st Congressional District this November, telling CBS 6, quote, I am concerned about rising costs to New York farmers and committed to protecting the rights and working conditions of workers. I will focus on addressing workforce shortages and increasing profit margins for New York farms so that farmers and farm workers can thrive. Well, tonight we're taking that question to car dealers, too, the ones who control how much you end up paying for your car. Some dealers are already on board with the idea of going electric. Our Laura Lagarde is sampling some more of them tonight. Laura. Matt, the focus on today's announcement was on a greener New York. One supply chain expert I spoke to says this change is putting us a step in the right direction. Welcome to the future. 
Governor Kathy Ockel announced plans to require cars, SUVs, and pickup trucks to be zero emission by 2035 in the state of New York. Co-owner of Crest Cadillac, Jim Barr, says that plan falls right in line with THERS. At our Cadillac store, we plan to be fully EV, uh, fully electric with the vehicles we sell by 2030. Supply chain expert Patrick Penfield says the proposal is a step in the right direction to achieve a greener state and suggests gas stations reinvent themselves with the times. So the gas stations will be there. You'll see less of them unless they transition to be able to you know, charge electric vehicles. Penfield says he recently spoke to the Automotive Industry Alliance Group and says a common theme among all the members was electrification and how to move towards that. If we do it too fast, then you know, it could impact you know, uh, the infrastructure it could impact our ability to, you know, to transition to different industries into different things. We have power coming into this building, as you might imagine, but not adequate to, uh, for all the charges we're going to need for this new fleet of EVs. One big concern for many is the price of electric vehicles. Governor Hochul says she understands the cost of cars, especially some electric options, are still high but says they will provide $10 million to help purchasers minimize the cost and buy these new cars. As the volumes grow, then you'll see this, you'll start to see the uh, prices drop. But until that happens, the prices will still be high. Penfield says there will still be a need for non-renewable energy, but the hope is to move away from that. Barr says for his dealership, that's not a problem. As our manufacturers are very committed to an electric future. And um, so, and, and there's a chance that we could actually get more allocation here in New York State because of what the governor is doing. The governor notes that this will help New York achieve its climate requirements of reducing greenhouse gases by 85 percent by 2050. Bye. Two Capital Region lawmakers are alleging the governor and her administration are trying to cover up what they say is, quote, state negligence in the 2018 Schoharie limo crash that killed 20 people. They're now calling for a legislative hearing to investigate. CBS 6's Brianna Supardi joining us live in Albany tonight. And Bree, these allegations come less than two days before the limo safety task force needs to submit its final report. That's right, Anne. And some members of this group have called for an extension on that deadline because they feel their final report should include findings from the state inspector general's investigation looking into allegations that state agencies are culpable. However, after a year and a half, the IG's investigation is still ongoing and some are questioning why. And the report is still due October 1st. Now, Republican state lawmakers Senator Jim Tedisco and Assemblyman Chris Tigg are now calling on the Senate and Assembly Transportation and Investigation Committees to use their subpoena power and hold a joint legislative public hearing over potential collusion among the Hochul administration, the IG, and the task force chairs. They're calling on this investigation after a report by the National Transportation Safety Board found that state agencies played a part in the events that led up to the crash and, lo and the loss of 20 lives. Now, I spoke with the father of one of the victims in the crash. He's also a task force member. He says he agrees with the lawmaker's position to shed some light on the status of this IG report. To say that the families are frustrated, it's an understatement of epic proportions. I mean, it's amazing how uh, we just can't get answers. They won't even admit if they're doing an investigation. It's the NTSB report, which was released about three years ago, um, that report said there might be some culpability or some issues as it relates to the New York State DMV and DOT. If that's truly the case, then that's truly the kind of information the safety task force needs. Kevin Cushing is one of several task force members calling for an extension to the October 1st deadline. We reached out to the governor's office to get their response to these allegations of collusion. A spokesperson sent a statement saying in part, quote, the task force is required by law to release its recommendations on October 1st, which is separate and independent from the ongoing inspector general's investigation. We look forward to reviewing the inspector general's report and taking swift action to implement the appropriate recommendations from both the task force and the inspector general. Now, the task force's report is set to include recommendations on how the state can improve um, the state's regulations on stretch limousines.